Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about autism crisis in the Somali community. It's actually a bit funny because I was talking about this a couple of days ago with one of my friends and we were discussing how many kids we've seen lately with autism and we found that to be very strange. And then I saw this news clip and I want to share it with you. But firstly, let's check the news clip and then I'll comment a bit more. In recent years, the prevalence of autism has risen significantly across all populations in the U.S. Diagnoses are more common among children of color, but one group, Somali Americans, is seeing an alarming increase. Autism is not widely understood in the Somali community, even though it's becoming alarmingly prevalent. Overall rates in our four-year-olds of one in 53. And what we were seeing in our Somali four-year-olds were rates of 1 in 16. That's astounding, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What they cannot answer is why autism is so prevalent in the local Somali community, where they also found higher rates of intellectual disability than in the general population. Literally hundreds of genes have been identified that are linked with autism. So knowing how to predict autism ahead of time, we're not there yet. Having a biomarker for autism, we're not there yet either. There, there may be an environmental component, but we're very much in the early stages of learning what those environmental components might be. Now that is absurd. What that means is that there's three times more autistic kids in the Somali community than there are in other communities. And that is crazy. How is that even possible? Three times more. Not like twice or like 20% more. Three times more. And they say that, oh, we don't know how to explain this. Maybe it's the environment. Well, of course it's the environment. And we can act dumb as much as we want. But the reality is that this is the end conclusion. This is the result of 40 years of civil war. 40 years of not having a health care education system, 40 years of droughts and famines, 40 years of suffering, struggling and trauma. Because these mothers are from Somalia. Now their kids were born in US and some of you might think that oh maybe it's in only in Minnesota. Maybe the Somali Minnesota community has a specific issue. No, I don't live there. I've never even been there. How can I come to the conclusion that, oh, we are having a lot of autistic kids? And I checked. The same issue is in Europe. The same issue is in Australia. The same issue is in Somalia and in Somaliland, in Djibouti, in Putland. I don't care where you are from. Every Somali community has this issue because at the end of the day, our parents lived most of their lives without health care, without education, without proper nutrition, without proper facilities. Now we are going through a third generation that are going to suffer the same fate. 40 years is a long time. There are people who've, who were born in that 40 years and they died without ever seeing a proper government, without seeing no progress in anything. Things just keeps going worse and worse. And the sad reality is that no one cares. No one cares. There is an one Somali politician who gives a shit. <laughs> they don't care. It's all about making more money. If this guy's from that community, I'm from this community, vote for me, pa pa pa. They don't care. No one cares. And, you know, these mothers, these parents, most of them, okay, their kids are autistic. Instead of saying, oh, we have an autism issue and let's go find the root of it and maybe let's not promote these silly politicians that are not doing anything for us. Maybe let's try to find a conclusion, a end result. Let's move forward. Let's fix our communities. Let's fix our road. Let's get a healthcare system. Let's feed our kids properly. Instead of having famines and droughts pretty much every year nowadays. I remember when I was a kid, it was every now and then. Now it seems every year is a drought. So the point is that this is a natural conclusion. And if we do not stop this now, what do you think that the next generation will be? It will be one in eight. And by the way, I, I watched the whole clip. They said that there are autistic kids who can live normally and they can do whatever. And you know, Robert Einstein was autistic, apparently. I don't mind. But a lot of them will have to be taken care of. 
And as they said in the clip, it's not only autism, other mental challenges as well. So all of those people will have to take care of and they will never have a future. They don't deserve this. I don't think we actually talk enough about the consequences of living like this. Like the consequences of living without a country, living without a government, this and there's a million other issues that we have. And none of them we're going to get fixed. And how long are we going to be asking for others to help us? You know, these mothers, they go to the U.S. government. Oh, please give us something. And the U.S. government keeps telling them that, oh, you'll be all right. And then the people in Europe, they be begging the European government. And then people in Somalia be begging UN and other things. The, our president, Hassan Sheikh, he is begging UN and other uh, countries. He goes around begging for things. But these are things that we can change these things. We can solve these things. We can at least mitigate these issues. And we can make sure that the next generation, it won't be one in 16. It will be one in 30, one in 50. And in the future, at some point, maybe we'll have the same amount of autistic kids as every other community in this world. But anyways, to be perfectly honest, I I don't know if any of the what I said make any sense, but please do subscribe, like, and share. Take care.